too busy to sit and explain to a real estate agent how wholesale deal works. So we came up with some systems in place, okay, that when offers come in, they get handled a certain way, and there's certain rules or certain requirements that DAM requests that are all given in advance to make a deal or not make a deal, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we have our own documentation. These are things that, um, you know, you'd have to talk directly with us or come up with your own, okay? Um, so I explain how a wholesale deal is worked. Do you believe that there's been people, uh, real estate agents in this business for 20 years that never did a whole, never was involved with an agent who had a wholesale deal? Okay? And I'm not the only, I know I'm not the only agent broker who are listing wholesale deals. I see it all the time in the MLS. You can tell by the wording. You might see equitable owner under the name owner in the MLS. Okay? Um, so I consummate and go back and forth between, and sometimes it's just text to Dan, okay, with uh, here's the offer. And we already know that most of the terms are already worked out in advance because that's the system we have. Okay, so it's really just about price and settlement. Okay, um, Dan gets it right away. If everything's agreeable, I send over the contracts. I don't even let an agent waste their time writing documentation, writing offers up, unless they want to, where they're determined to. And sometimes they insist. Some, yeah, <laughs> they insist. Sometimes they insist. You know, give me a verbal. A verbal doesn't mean... I like to save, I'm all about saving time, okay? If I could save another agent time because... And a tree. And a all tree, that all that paper and time to, to scan, reprint it, scan it, send it. Give me the number, and then I'll say, okay, write it up. If they get it back fast enough, great. If you don't get it back fast enough, that doesn't mean it's taken off the market. It's never taken off the market until it's a signed deal, okay? And watch your wording with other realtors. That's all I could tell you. Okay, so, communication's critical. So here's the thing, like in so, the in the past for me, Howard, yeah. I used to just go pay three hundred bucks, get a flat fee listing, right? Right. And I use my contract with the with the seller and right. I list my property. Right. So like my retail deals actually there's a complicated situation. Howard doesn't handle any of my retail listings. Um, I have another partnership and um, my partner's wife is an agent, so it's kind of right. one of the vigs of him handling most of the uh, heavy lifting on those deals. Right. But for the wholesale deals, I pay you more than I would pay for a flat fee listing. I mean, Correct. what are the benefits that you give me? Can you just explain some of that stuff so that, like, you Before know. Before I tell you what the benefits are to me, what benefits are there to you? The um, benefits that are there to you are as follows. Obviously, I'm giving a little bit more than a flat fee service. A flat fee service, and there are plenty of them out there, and... You're welcome to use them, but here's what they really do. They take your information for the property, they list it on the MLS how you would like it, hopefully, okay? You don't always get the description you want. You don't always get the ability to make changes instantly all the time um, because somebody else is doing that for you, and it could be one girl one day, another girl another, because they sit in the office and... They just input. So changes could be by a phone. you got to wait. Um, I make my changes pretty instantly as long as it's in the office. That change gets taken care of. Whether it comes to me from Dan via email or text, I make the changes. Okay. Sometimes we have to withdraw. Sometimes we have to um, active no-show. When a, when a lockbox is taken, I can't allow agents to... Uh, necessarily uh, go down there and waste their time. I'm all about saving everybody time. Um, another reason is, uh, um, you know, you could make, sometimes I'll go to settlements, but when I know that I got a tough agent on the other end representing their client that's really been a little tough along the way, I'm not going to just leave it with one of Dan's partners. Sometimes I will just go to settlement. Okay, now I make a lot less per deal. That's, that's granted, right, don't I, mm -hmm. in most cases? Mm -hmm. But I also negotiated the ability to, A, any lead that comes in from the listing, and which gets put to the Internet, comes back to me, and I decide whether, A, I want to show it and make the buyer side of the commission, okay? Two, offer it to one of my existing buyers. Three, 
uh, whether I want to uh, give it back to Dan to one of his uh, partners to show the property if it's too far away from me to show because I'm busy too and then it I, I still have the ability to get paid if I refer it back but I have the deals firsthand on the market to be able to sell to my investors and there was a deal where and this the next one there's a deal where we did on Ludlow Street and that buyer was a particular buyer for a certain type of really really cheap really Really rough property. It was a damn. Could you say how long we had this on the MLS for? I think it was on for four months. About four months. Maybe even a little longer. I think it might have gone away and came back. Yeah, and there were title issues. issues. It was like a nightmare, and finally exactly. we ended up getting it settled. But we so here it is. I mean, I get a call on a phone. Guy, I sent him through it, and he liked it and wanted to buy it. And next thing you know, um, I get sometimes, not all the time, but some of my buyers pay me uh, a buyer fee, you know, as an agent, you could understand on low end property where the commission isn't that big, you can get a buyer fee, you know, thousand dollars. Yeah, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Yeah. In the heyday of the market, we were getting like two thousand, but you know, we don't get it on every deal and not every buyer, but that buyer wanted that property and he's willing to pay me because he knows my commission is so small on these low end deals that he's willing to pay me a buyer fee. Well, I sold him two other properties that had nothing to do with uh, Dan. You know, properties I sold him on the MLS. So you're meeting buy buyer clients by having my wholesale inventory that I do put up marketed on your site and elsewhere. You're I actually meeting buyers. I'm meeting buyers, and that buyer, matter of fact, called me last week, and we tried to put one under agreement. It, it didn't quite work out. This this one that would have been the the third separate deal than than Dan's but nice. yeah so I do have buyers out of it and I know exactly what he wants where he wants it so if anything I see it come up I text him right away you know if he wants it he says submit an offer I submit the offer right to the REO agent boom it's a deal or not a deal the nice thing about working with investors is you literally can write 10 deals in a week and get four or five accepted in a week okay and I'm not the only proof of that because that happened to me not this last week, but um, uh, my brother-in-law, very consistent, very consistent. You know, he averages 15 deals, 20 deals a month. Some I, one month we closed 30 with his, you know, 30 a, deals in one month. 30 That's deals a deal a day. Month. Including Saturdays and Sundays. Yeah, but, but uh, <laughs> understand this. Understand this too that um, they were probably, uh, there's months where we only had maybe five or six or eight settlements Tell you from that one things. client because what will happen is, yeah, deals will get pushed forward and then all of a sudden you could have a closing week with 10 deals and uh, you could, the last couple of weeks, maybe we only had two closings uh, this month. You know, two closings in one month for him is nothing. I mean, you know, we're halfway, almost halfway through the month, you know, in the, yeah. Yeah. Some of them go like well, that. So. Yeah. So two last two weeks, we're starving in a sense where we count on a certain amount of money every single week, and if you don't reach that number, you you know you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. You know you're just taking from your account or whatever. But it eventually comes back, just like we talked about with your with your um, pipeline. You know the yeah. pipeline kind of gets you know stopped up a little bit it's no big deal every every real estate agent goes through it but it's the I average think, I think it's everybody the in the real estate business this is why the, the rental business is so attractive because right. there's some steadiness to the yeah, income that's coming in every recur, month. reoccurring revenue so you can build that up and get that pipeline set up but for uh, agents I'm a fix and flip company so all of my retail fix and flips I think I've had my last fix and flip retail payday back in like October or November so we're like way backlogged the way you're talking about and the same thing with uh, wholesale inventory, you, you have, it's a cycle. It's like a real estate cycle. And you're feast or famine, some, some months it's 30 deals, some months it's two deals. You're getting buyers' clients from having wholesalers' inventory advertised. And I know I'm not the only guy you have kind of doing this uh, wholesale right. listing thing, but how much are you paying for this like uh, stream of buyer leads that comes from? I don't pay anything for it. It's free. It comes with it. You know, you, you never know what you get in this business, Dan. It's the kind of thing where you can have one client that'll do one deal with you, but 
his friend could be one of those big fish that you're looking for, okay? You could look through the market and try to, and I encourage everybody to try to find that whale, that big fish that'll be that constant source of income from you. But a lot of times they come from other people. This is a relationship business. The, the, the real estate, if you're going to sit back and, and just wait for something to happen, it's not going to work. I have one client, and we'll end, I guess, I'll end whenever you'd like, but here, here's a particular example. I have one client who I've had for seven years. He buys, he fixes, he sells. That's what he does. He doesn't buy that often. I can't make a living from it. But he's one of many clients, and I like to find him what he likes. He likes a couple of zip codes. He, it supplements his income. He, he's good with, uh, you know, he does the work himself most of the time. He rarely farms anything else. He doesn't have a crew. And he has the cash in the bank and he can close tomorrow. I must have showed him 20 REO properties. Oh, man. <laughs> and we're getting outbid. And not because he won't pay. It's because the market right now, in this market, this market is... The REO inventory is tight to begin with, okay? Less and less foreclosures are being filed at this time than in the previous years, okay? So there's not as many hitting the market. And when they do, it's a right market to rehab right now. To buy it, to fix it, and to sell it with interest rates as low as it's been. Rehabbers have been back in this market and they're constantly searching for inventory and it's hard to find. That's why having wholesale deals, okay, is that extra little source that helps me. There was a few that I showed them that were yours. It didn't, for one reason or another, it didn't work out for him. But it doesn't mean that I didn't have access to him and could have sold him one, okay, of those. Right? You ended up, we ended up selling them anyway, didn't we? Oh, oh yeah, yeah everything ended Go up on. selling. Go on. Anyway... What I did was have one of my wholesalers take a whole bunch of flyers. I say, I want you to hit this particular market with your flyers. Go into this market. Get your signs up. Go talk to the neighbors. I provide them the flyers to several wholesalers. Not for me to go out and wholesale. For them to wholesale to bring to my client that needs a particular property in a particular area that I can't even get on the MLS. Hmm. And my time is too busy and too valuable for me to go door to door with flyers. That doesn't mean I ever did that in the past. Did it work? When I went in the past? No, when the guy did it now, this time. Well, did he do any deals okay, or what? Okay, this is one particular circumstance. I just handed him 2,000 flyers last night. So okay. he's starting. He's... But, but uh, I don't know if you remember, I may have mentioned to you, a couple of weeks ago, I sent another wholesaler several thousand flyers <laughs> to go to a particular area that I have my New York buyer buy. He buys in this one particular developing area. I sent him right, knowing he, I gave him the boundaries. I said, from here to here, this street to this street, and from this street to this street. Take those flyers, go to that section, and he called me in the afternoon and says, I got a property I'm putting under contract tomorrow. So there you go. So I got it works. him a whole oh it works. Oh, it absolutely works. Hmm. You know, I guess maybe I should be out there with some flyers going door to door <laughs> because the, I know I'm going to benefit by losing some weight. I have a couple of pounds I'd like to lose. But honestly, I'd rather send other wholesalers, being a realtor, let me just say this, a lot of agents and realtors may be hesitant to work with wholesalers because, you know, in the back of your mind, you're okay, I'm a realtor, I'm licensed, this person is putting the property under contract with a homeowner, he's, he's taking money out of the real estate agent's money in the community because He's making these deals where I don't get the listing. I've had other agents tell me this, you know. So I'm listening to their philosophy on it, and I say what they're doing is 100% legal, first of all. Okay, anybody can assign a contract to another individual for a fee, okay. But as an agent, I have also, I'm licensed by the state. 
I could still do it. Other brokers and agents, by the way, do do wholesale deals. So if you think that brokers and agents don't wholesale property instead of listing them and making a commission, there's a lot that do, okay? But if you feel uncomfortable doing wholesaling, which maybe you're like me, I felt my best um, service I could provide is still being a realtor to investors. I mean, it makes the most sense. So I will take my um, network of a few wholesalers and I will guide them, teach them if they're new and they need help with anything, they can call me and question me if they have any questions, but most of them are already uh, experienced, okay? Uh, some more than others, okay? And I help them. I mean, think about this, Dan. For me to make a flyer, I take a flyer, you know, it's like a Word document or a PDF that I created, a simple one page, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, that I will go out and I'll spend 13, anywhere from nine to $13, dollars, depending on the weight, for a gold, yellow, pink piece of paper, print it on black and white. I was doing color, but black and white seems to work just as well and run off several thousand copies on my printer and hand it or meet somebody on the street and hand them a bunch of flyers so they could make money and me help my clients find more property that I can't get from the existing sources through the MLS is a win-win situation. What does it cost me? It costs me what? Maybe I spend thirty, forty dollars for the day? That's nothing. And I'm not even walking door to door, although I need the exercise. They're doing it, and they're making money, and I'm happy they're making money. I'll make my money from my buyer, okay? Or, or maybe uh, the wholesaler will offer me something. But my buyers typically pay me a fee, okay? Anyway, they do. They pay me if I'm not bringing them something that I'm making a commission on. So everybody's happy. I don't, I don't see. It's just me trying to... Um, be a service to all parties involved. Just what little thing can you do? How could you separate yourself from the next realtor? I mean, how many realtors you know will give somebody else? Um, and these guys love it. My wholesalers, they're like, they don't sit there on their computer. You know, a lot of them, what you would consider uh, like a street hustler. You know, someone who will sell cars on a street, which some do. I don't know if you know that in the inner city. Uh, guys will go to the auction, they'll buy a car, it'll sit on X street, they have some on every street. Yeah, I've seen them around. You've seen them? And yep. they'll sell a car to someone in the neighborhood, and they don't own a car lot, and they're not a dealer. Uh, these guys are, are they want to make money just like everybody else does. And some sometimes, as you know, the characteristics of a wholesaler, the ones that I've worked with that are, um, they want two things. They want speed and and price, speed and price, but they're willing to give up a little bit on price to get the deal done. And they're definitely willing to share wholesale fees. Not all of them. Not all, not all, but some will, okay? And a lot of them, if you see the inner networkings, work with other wholesalers. So sometimes the deal that I'm, I could be involved in may not be that particular wholesaler's deal. But he'll get the job done, which means I get my client gets a property, access to additional properties that the wholesaler may not already have. I'm not saying they all do that, but definitely they want a deal that's going to, and, and the buyer has to close. That's another huge um, requirement that a wholesaler wants. He doesn't, he's not going to put it under contract with just anybody. He knows that his reputation is on the line. Okay, so if any of my investors buy from a wholesaler and don't close, that's a big problem to that wholesaler. And it kind of like tarnishes a little relationship I might have with a wholesaler. Mm -hmm. So it's a balancing act. It's not just me. It's, a, it's the agents too. Um, you know, you, you, you don't want to uh, hurt a relationship with a REO agent who you keep bringing property to and then all of a sudden your, your deals start to, to fall apart. You got to make sure that your buyers, okay, are strong enough to do what they say they're going to do. They're going to close, okay? But, you know, 
it happens. It's a rare instance where it happens. You may have had it in the past where, you know, they don't all close for whatever particular reason it may be. That's they, why you don't count your money until you never check count it until you get settled. Your and, right. Yeah, everything is done. Yeah. Um, so well. Well, that's pretty uh, we'll cool. re recap pretty much. Uh, basically, this was, uh, um, as you probably realize, you know, I'm pretty much Dan's exclusive, you know, realtor when it comes to listing the wholesale deals at this time. You know, it could change, but for now and for the last couple of years, this is we have a very good working relationship. And I encourage any of the any agents and brokers to consider working with wholesalers because they're not going away and they're a part of the market, and your clients could benefit as well as yourself from working with wholesalers, uh, for one. Two, uh, I just wanted to give you an idea that working with investors really has its benefits. Um, it's not for everybody, but it was how I was brought up. I was in the real estate investing when I got started. I still am. I love it. Um, I don't necessarily rehab today. I have a lot of property management that I deal with and people who help me do that, as well as my only job is to try to, you know, offer a little bit more service in certain areas to the real estate investors and to the real estate wholesalers. And I encourage you to consider uh, doing the same or find your niche that works for you. Dan? Do you have any other final words of wisdom for realtors in working with or choosing the right wholesaler? I mean, are there certain wholesalers? Um... I, that a realtor would want to avoid, or any other well, jewels of wisdom? Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, it's just a people business. So you basically, I take people on their word at first, and I see how they perform, whether they're going to do what they say they're going to do, or have what they say they're going to have. And I'll try working with them. If I see that there's, um, you know, some ethical issues where maybe there's something they're not telling me that I find out that isn't... Um, you know, not as mutual, and they feel the same way too. There are some really good wholesalers where ethics are sometimes more important than the money because when you put a deal together with someone, you want it to be a long-term relationship. So he's, they look for long-term relationships too. So it's, 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 you know, I'm sure that if you were to work with some investors, you'll find that, you know, they may not be the client for you. I tried to lay out the ideal client Nobody's perfect, but it, as close as you can get to somebody who buys quickly, has enough cash, has an insatiable appetite, gets to the property, or you go to the property for them and provide the information that's going to make them a, make a quick decision. Okay, get your offer in and get it to get the deal. So that, the easiest part of the deal is getting it written and in. Okay, that's the easiest part of any realtor's job, really. The rest is taken care of, and. You know, so yeah, I would say look and give somebody the benefit of the doubt in advance, give them a chance, and you'll decide whether it's worth continually working with them or not. Okay? I'm not perfect. Dan's not perfect. I know I've, I've made some mistakes in the last six months alone. Okay? Dan doesn't hold them against me. He's about moving forward. And that's the kind of client I like to work with because they, they can't expect you to be superhuman. You're normal like everybody else. You know, you try your hardest. Occasionally a mistake is made, whether it's in timing or a communication or something. But honestly, this is the wholesalers are mostly, like Dan, are easy to work with. Um, the right investor is easy to work with. You know, do you ever get upset about a client? Yeah, you go talk to your talk to your wife, girlfriend. You know, go to the bar, talk to the uh, bartender, blow off the steam, go to the gym or whatever. Guess what? If there was any ideal easy business, you know, we're all looking for some that idealism. There's no nothing is perfect. This is this is like any other job. It's hard work, but there's a lot. It's rewarding. Yeah, the, the money is, is, is certainly uh, worthwhile. Um, nobody can hire or fire me. Um, 
you know, with, with just one client. Uh, I, I determine my own hours. That's one of the benefits of real estate. But you know what? Um, it's been fun. It's been a great ride. So um, I encourage you to, you know, do the same. If you have any questions, feel free to call Dan or myself. And if we can help you out a little bit, we'd certainly help you. You know, I have had other calls from people who see what I do, and they've called me on it. Competitors. I didn't bother me. I told them to help them out. Why? Because, you know, what goes around comes around. You know, it's karma. It's, uh, you know... You know, if the minute you're close-minded and just want to only help yourself, you're never going to make it, whether it's in real estate or any other business, okay? It's just not how the world is today. You know, not if you want to succeed. Agree? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, you mentioned, uh, but, you mentioned mistakes and you mentioned yeah. the ethics. And I right. think it's important to be a man of your word in this business. And if you tell somebody that you have a deal, you got to be pressed to yeah. keep the deal just last night. And this wasn't a deal that you're involved in. Um, okay. We had a multiple offer situation over the weekend. Again, which they're wonderful things to have. But uh, you mean like the week before with us? Uh -huh. Yep, yep. So we had a twenty-five thousand dollar deal that we accept. Right. The assignment is twenty-five thousand right. dollars. And then uh, after the deadline, we get another offer that was forty-two thousand dollars. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Wow. That's a seventeen thousand uh, dollar. Standing by our word, you know, we never know what kind of offers we're going to get. You know, the right. offers range from like lower than the contract price, where we're making no money, to like sometimes you know you, you hit the numbers right and somebody's willing to pay you know way more than what everybody else is willing to pay. And it's kind of that uh, fluctuation that. where we where we earn our our biggest Certainly. deals. And when I explain to realtors, I always like to use the bigger numbers. Let's say it like it is. I don't know. I, I rarely know the numbers that Dan contracts properties for. That's not important to me. What's important to me is what is a buyer willing to pay for this property? Okay? So I don't want to be convoluted early on in knowing. Okay? But as a wholesaler, they do make pretty large fees. Okay? Um, on occasion. On occasion. Sometimes they're not. But I use an example all the time. So I say, well, you know, if. Uh, If, a, if your client is willing to pay $25,000 for this property, all right, my client, a wholesaler, has his prop, may, may have this property under agreement for a dollar, $5,000, $10,000. So let's just use the example if we have it, your buyer wants to pay $25,000, and my wholesaler has a, paid, ha, has a contract for ten. there's a $15,000 fee that is going to be paid to the wholesaler and less certain expenses out of that. So they know going in, okay, that what the important part of the contract, of the uh, transaction is, what is the buyer willing to pay for this property at this time? That's it. That's what it. is he keep willing to pay? Focus. Keep the focus where it's it needs to be. It's not how much money somebody else is making because you know what? Many a times, in most cases, you may not realize this, but your investor clients they don't care. They just want to look at the money for what they paid for it, plus closing, and how much they're going to make on a deal. Because the retail number is going to be much higher after the rehab. And if okay. they do care, you want to make sure that you keep the focus where it needs to be, and that's the profit and what they believe is the right price for the property that they are willing to pay. Absolutely. Keep the focus where it needs to be. Um, cool. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming out, Howard. You're welcome, Dan. Um, if anybody wants to get in touch with you, should I put some contact information? I'll put an email address or something like that yeah, in the can, show notes? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, email's fine. Uh, yeah, that's good. Sounds good. Well, if you enjoyed this REI Diamond interview, you can sign up for the newsletter at www.reidiamonds.com. We publish uh, some money-making jewels of wisdom there on a weekly basis. A lot of good stuff there. Well, thanks again for coming out, Howard, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, closing some more deals with you Absolutely. soon. Absolutely.